Welcome to Hypnosis Today, the nation's first hypnosis TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. Hello, my name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I'll be your host, covering a wide variety of topics to help you understand better the power of the subconscious mind and how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve happiness, success, and prosperity. Today, I have two very special guests. Well, my first guest is Malia Tron, and she's an honors grad of HMR College of Hypnotherapy. And she has with her, her very special guest, Brandon. Now, Brandon came in to see Malia to get some reconciliation, forgiveness, and be able to move forward as he came into forgiveness with his family where he grew up. Please help me welcome my guests. Brandon, I want to start with you. You know, when people are talking about coming into forgiveness with their family, a lot of time they see a marriage and family therapist. What made you think about coming in to see a hypnotist? Well, I actually have seen a lot of therapists in the past probably like six years, and I just never really found any clarity in that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to try something different. I, I, when I saw Malia, I wasn't sure what to expect. How did you even find uh, Malia? Actually, on Groupon. On Groupon? Yeah. Malia, I have to stop right here and just commend you. We live in such a wonderful world where we have um, the internet and social media to be able to let everyone know about hypnotherapy. And I love that you had a Groupon. So you found it on Groupon. Yeah. So you didn't know what to expect. What did you think hypnosis was? I just wanted to come in and, and get my own experience instead of like looking at stuff online or or trying to figure it out before I came. Now, you told me that you had been, over the last six years, to some other therapists. What were you still struggling with, with your family? Um, forgiveness uh, with my mom. Um, I was also adopted, but I didn't find out until I was 15. Really? So yes. were you angry about not being told? Yes. I can really understand that. Yeah. So it gives you a little bit of a crisis of identity. Yes. Were there other things that you were still holding on to with your mom? Uh, yeah, just, just how, well, um, I'm gay, and she found out when I was about 14, and how she handled that I wasn't really a fan of. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, so, so that was pretty much most of the forgiveness I needed to work on, but then also the adoption was part of that too. Those are two very large things to not have your parents, especially your mom, be forthright about and to be loving and understanding and have unconditional positive regard for you. How was your lack of forgiveness affecting your life? Um, when I was about 16, I started to develop fibromyalgia and um, I'm very sensitive. so. I've always been very affected by the energy around me and the people around me. And my fa with my family being so uh, anxious and angry all the time, it, it really affected me. So, so in, in that way, um, I think that's where the fibromyalgia came from. I understand. And when you talk about being affected by the energy that the, uh, of the people around you, first of all, you preach into the choir. Yeah. And a hypnotherapist certainly understands that language and that reality. What did you experience when you came to Malia? Um, I just think that I finally felt like somebody understood me and um, I was shown my peaceful self. That's what I, that's what I felt. What a beautiful metaphor, shown my peaceful self. Malia, tell me about how you used hypnosis for this very interesting issue of coming into forgiveness for one's family and then ultimately for oneself. Well, yeah, of course, Lisa. Well, what I do for this process is basically I just work with two states. I work two states with, of hypnosis? Yes, yes. What yes, do you mean? There are two states. There is a lighter state and there is a deeper state. And starting off with the lighter state, all I do for the induction is I have the client take three big deep breaths and at this point this is where we access the emotion that's preventing them from moving forward and forgiving and healing 
And this emotion can be anything, such as anger, fear, sadness, wow. what have you. Brandon, were you able in that very light state to be access, to actually access the emotion that was holding you back? What was your emotion? Anger. Wow. So now that we know the emotion, what do we do next? Yeah, so once we identify this emotion, we get to know this emotion. And we do this by communicating with it. I'll ask questions such as, where do you feel it in your body? What size is it? What color is it? Is there a temperature or a texture? And what these questions help elicit is it helps the client form somewhat of a, of a tangible image in their mind so they can separate from this emotion. And once they can separate, I have the client become this image. And this is when we call upon an inner guide to appear. An inner guide to yes. appear? Did an yes. inter, inner guide reveal itself to you? Yes. What was your inner guide? Do you mind sharing it with us? Sure. Um, my dog passed away last year. I'm so and sorry. She was such a huge spirit, so she's always been my inner guide that appears whenever I'm going through something. So we have our inner guide in this case. It's an animal companion. That spirit is so large that it still is a force in the conscious and subconscious mind. What do we talk to our inner guide about? Well, the purpose of having an inner guide is to draw wisdom and guidance, but the most important aspect of having the inner guide present is so it can answer, help answer the big question, what is the need of this strong emotion? So the anger or the fear or the sadness has a need. Yes. Was your inner guide able to help you identify and articulate what was the need of the anger? Yes, um, she was. Uh, it just needed to feed on negativity, and if I would if I would feed it that, it would. Stay. So if you fed it negativity, it would stay. So now we have a very interesting juncture or choice point. We can have the anger, and we can feed it, and it will stay, or. Or what we do is because this negativity is what it feeds on. What we do is have Tamara send it an immense amount of love and light, give it some positive energy instead. And what that helps it do is kind of break it apart. And this is the point once we identify those needs, I have the client move over to the recliner. I use the eye fascination as the induction. I count down from 20 to zero, deep sleep. And this is where I will state the needs back right to the client as suggestions so that they're now free to move forward. So you were able to feed the emotion, but instead of feeding it and having it grow from be, all that negative energy, you could feed it love and light and forgiveness and energy. And when you were able to feed it in a positive way, what happened to your anger, Brandon? Um, it definitely lessened. And it was like I met it with understanding instead of with uh, fear or um, trying to push it away. I'm gonna move from the theoretical into the practical. Are you still in contact with your adoptive uncle or your, your, your mom, yes. the mom who raised you? Tell me about your relationship with her. Um, I feel like b before hypnotherapy, I was having a lot of problems because everything was kind of coming up um, from out of nowhere. And after hypnotherapy, I'm able to just appreciate who she is and, and, and the fact that she did raise me and the fact that she does love me. So, do you have any contact at all with your biological mom? Um, kind of, yeah. What did you choose, and I use those words very, very deliberately, what did you choose to do with your biological mom? Is she a part of your life? She's not a part of my life anymore. But um, she's contacted me a few times in the past probably like five years. And um, she just doesn't seem like the right person to have in my life. She wants to be my mom, but that's not. You already have a mom. Yes, I, I, I already have a mom. You know, the mom who you throw up on and she doesn't really seem to mind, <laughs> that's what I call the real mom. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you've made the choice that she has an agenda, but it's not yours. Yes. And it's your life, and you're not living her agenda. You're living your own life. 
Exactly. So now that we've forgiven mom, how do you feel about yourself? The things that, the authentic person that you are, that your mom had some objection with in the past, how do you feel about yourself since you've been in hypnotherapy? I feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more in touch with myself. What kind of things do you have? You seem like a, a lovely young man. Thank you. What kind of things do you have in your future? What are your goals? Um, I really just want to be happy and I want to find myself through the many arts that I know and just live a free life. What did hypnotherapy feel like for you? You went in with no expectation. Were you surprised at what hypnotherapy was? I was very surprised with how liberating it can be. What was the biggest surprise and how it felt? Um, just how much weight I did have on my shoulders and how different it feels when it's off. That's beautiful. That really is beautiful. What would you say to someone who had tried different modalities of therapy um, in the past and was looking for something new or different or unique or progressive or even a little new age if you want, even though it's one of the older therapies in the world. <laughs> what would you say to someone about trying a hypnotherapist? That it can really benefit your life. It can really open up your mind and let you see what's really going on and, and not what appears to be going on. What would you say about Malia? She's amazing. <laughs> Malia? Everybody's going to want to contact you about your unique and insightful way of doing hypnotherapy and working in two different trans states. Do you Skype as well? Yes, I do Skype and I do phone sessions so I can help people from all over the world. And I also do FaceTime. FaceTime, yes. I love it. I'm a big <laughs> Mac user myself. Yes. Well, everybody who wants to work with Malia can reach Malia Tron on hmigrads.com. We're going to take a short break, but please stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to meet another HMI grad and we're going to learn how to use hypnosis to reduce anxiety when you're waiting for those medical results to come back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more hypnosis today. Welcome to Hypnosis Today, the nation's first hypnosis TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. Hello, my name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I'll be your host, covering a wide variety of topics to help you understand better the power of the subconscious. <laughs> Brandon, I want to start with you. You know, when people are talking about coming into forgiveness with their family, a lot of time they see a marriage and family therapist. What made you think about coming in to see a hypnotist? Well, I actually have seen a lot of therapists in the past probably like six years. And And how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve happiness, success, and prosperity. Today I have two very special guests. Well, my first guest is Malia Tron, and she's an honors grad of HMR College of Hypnotherapy. And she has with her, her very special guest, Brandon. Now Brandon came in to see Malia to get some reconciliation, forgiveness, and be able to move forward as he came into forgiveness with his family where he grew up. Please help me welcome my guest. 